operational definitions this is a very important concept in quality and productivity what is soft what is hot what is on time what is a completed application what is waterproof my watch says it's waterproof does that mean I can go scuba diving or can I wash dishes or my hands without any problems so what do these words what do they mean this is where operational definitions will help us Dr. Deming says that an operational definition puts communicable meaning into a concept so we all understand and agree on what is soft what is on time what is a completed application so operational definitions are the link between the voice of the customer and the voice of the process perhaps you recall from a, one earlier slide that we define the voice of the process and the voice of the customer if if these two voices don't meet then you have a gap in the system in order to get the voice of the process closer and closer to the voice of the customers we need operational definitions so operational definitions are the link between the voice of the customer and the voice of the process also the aim of the system is determined through the operational definitions of the voice of the customer how do we translate the voice of the customer the customers needs not only today but into the future how do we translate that into operational definitions and design and redesign of our products and services so words have no meaning unless they are translated into action agreed upon by everyone this is really very very important in training when we train uh, operators managers um, we all have to have the same definition of an act or an action an operating procedure and be trained under the same conditions this would reduce variability in our in in the workplace one of the biggest sources of problem for organizations and businesses are that they operationally define concepts particularly customer needs as they see it rather than how customer defines that so as we mentioned an operational definition it is a link between the voice of the customer and the voice of the process what is quality we often use that word and but what does that mean a product or a service possess quality if it helps somebody and enjoys a market and sustainable market trade depends on quality so we often confuse gadgets with quality what we have to take into account and consider does it provide any value to the customer and is the customer willing to pay a price for it quality can be defined only in terms of the agent who is the judge of quality who is the judge of the quality of the health care you receive the insurance company the patients the physician who is the judge of the quality of the automobile you drive who is the judge of the quality of a toy that you purchase for someone reduction of waste is not necessarily additional value consider the design of the product or service we spend considerable amount of our time on reducing waste and, in, and improving so-called efficiency but does that create any value for the customers for example we can spend an enormous amount of time improving the quality or the, rather the efficiency and reduce waste in producing a black and white television does that, does that create any value for anyone so 
A company and a customer must have the same definition for quality. The quality must be defined and improved as defined by the customer. Does it create any value for the customer? And is the customer willing to pay a price for that? So who is the customer? Perhaps we can define customer in terms of internal customer and external customer. However, the focus should be on external customer. A customer is the one who uses the product or the service. The customer must be defined at the point of application. This is a very important uh, point. For example, we often define a customer as, as one who pays for the product or the service. An insurance company pays for the service in a hospital or in healthcare. However, the point of application, the recipient of that product or that service is the patient. However, the insurance company, the family of the patient, the doctors are, are stakeholders in that. Therefore, we should distinguish between customers and the stakeholders. So, it would be helpful to create a value chain, a series of uh, activities and, and points in a customer chain, and see how each step in that process adds value for the end user. The customers can be divided into three segments. Our current customers, the customers that are currently purchase our products and our services. The current customers, we have no guarantee that our current customers are, are going to be our future customers. Because that depends how we improve quality, how we innovate new products and services. Potential customers. These are the customers who are not buying from us now. Or everyone can be a potential customer of a new product or a new service. We were all potential customers of an iPod or a cell phone, iPhone, a new product, a new service. And the former customers. And these are the customers for one reason or another are no longer doing business with us. This is perhaps one of the most important quotations by Dr. Deming, that the consumer is the most important part of the production line. Quality should be aimed at the needs of the consumer, present and future. This goes back to the um, production or the organization viewed as a system where we have a consumer research feeding back information and data into our process not only for today but, I but into the future. Therefore quality should be aimed at the needs of the consumers present and future. What are the needs of the consumers in the future? Five years, ten years and fifteen years from now. So it will not suffice to have customers that are merely satisfied. Everybody is trying to satisfy the customers. And an unhappy customer rarely complains. They simply switch. And an, an unhappy customer will switch on the theory that, the, that he could not lose much and might gain. Now here is a very important, uh, another important point. Profits in business comes from repeat customers, customers that boast about your products and service, and that bring and that bring friends with them. Simply having satisfied customers are not sufficient. We have to have customers that are delighted to do business, to purchase products and services. So. <clears throat> To emphasize that, we can review the Kano model for customer satisfaction. 
Dr. Kana describes three features of, of, of the levels of customer satisfaction. If we look at the horizontal line and look at some quality characteristic and look at the vertical line, the level of customer satisfaction, then we can divide the level of our satisfaction and the quality of our products into two, three parts, three components. The basic characteristics, these are, these are the char characteristics that must be in the product and service. Airline safety. We fly safely. Well, we certainly don't want to advertise that. That's an expectation. You, you expect your luggage reaches the destination. That's a basic characteristic. The next is the performance related. More is the better. These are, these are, these are the characteristics. If they are present, the customer is, is happier. But if they're not present, the customer does not know, of, know about them. For example, as Peter Schulte uses, uh, the airline offers hot chocolate. Well, it is certainly uh, a performance-related characteristic. The next and the very the most important uh, description are known as delighters or exciters 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 characteristics. These are the characteristics that go beyond much beyond uh, the customer's expectations. These are the characteristics that delight the customers. Delighters are the key to the future. The a delighted customer comes back and brings a friend with him or her. So we need to continually work on new products and services that would delight the customers. As Dr. Deming says, a delighted customer comes back. A repeat customer is the major source of profit for an organization.